Hi there. Today I'm going to show you how I do section perspectives in Rhino. A section perspective, as you can see here, is pretty good at drawing you into the scene and giving you a sense of the three-dimensionality of your space that you've designed. So, for example, in this uh, building, uh, you have a fair few lines which are running uh, parallel to the line of the camera. These lines converge at a point somewhere in the distance. It's the same thing like you're looking down a road into the horizon, you'll see those converging lines. It's how the human vision works and that's why it's quite effective, it's quite realistic. Uh, the imposition of the structure on the space is quite, is quite pronounced. Um, this, uh, these examples are taken from Divisari and I, th I just, yeah, so this is section perspective. This is another section perspective, um, but here the line works pretty heavy and it's a bit too confusing for you. It's too busy. That's line work finesse, but that comes later. Here you can get a sense of where people are located in the design in the depth and they've located, well, they've put um, sort of CAD blocks in various areas to give you that, that emotional response. They've also put, uh, they've made the section cuts black so you know exactly what is being cut, what the solid part of the design is. This is no, um, this is not one to twenty or anything. So you're not seeing the absolute detail, but you get an idea of sort of how dense the structure is. This is a an, a straight section, and that is that there's no converging lines. So here you can see that there are still there's an emotional response and that's usually because of the, the sort of the people and the, and the, the, the fill that has been put into the design. Uh, but it's arguable and it's arguable to, as to whether this is more effective than the other one. And that this is perhaps more, uh, indicative of, of the emotional intent of the designer, but, um, both have their purpose. So for the straight section like this, you can see everyone's feet and <laughs> everyone's whole body, um, but you don't get that three dimensionality. So this building, you can't get a sense of how, you know, dense it is. Whereas this one is, you can get a sense of like the, the lightness of the building. And in this one, you can get a sense of the orthogonality, like the, the right angles of the building. And but, but this one is more, it might be better to study purely a spatial analysis from floor to floor and, and sort of how things are to scale in all parts of this drawing. Whereas in this drawing, only the parts which are cut by the section are to scale. So, and finally, this is a, um, I believe this is a sheer section. So the section has been um, cut and the building has been like the whole model has been sheared up or this is a, the camera has been aiming down in a in a projection view so everything still remains to uh, same scale vertically yeah, that'll be a, another video and this was the one that i did for a studio last last year um which yeah a studio and you can tell like it, it's quite effective. It shows it, it's a bird's eye view. It brings the, the viewer into the, into the design and, um, it's all vector and the, the parts which are solid have been cut and you can see them clearly with black, although black might not be the best for solid ground type thing up to you. But yes, yeah, so I'm going to show you how I got this type of thing done in Rhino. So in Rhino, I've got a couple of views. Firstly, I've got a perspective section camera and, a, and an arrangement view, but this is just for myself to organize things. The first thing uh, to note is the reason that I'm doing this method is because you cannot print perspective to scale and your, your, your tutor or your subject might require you to print to scale. So if I go to print and then I go down to the scale area, you can see that it's grayed out because Rhino does not know at which distance from your camera plane, your center plane, do you want to be sectioned? 
So we're going to tell Rhino what distance to have in 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 its um, to have into scale. So that 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 distance needs to be the same as the clipping plane. Then it will where it's cut, it will be pure one to one. So that's ideal. So what do we have? I'm going to okay. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to delete the clipping plane just so you know what I'm doing. So I'm going to layers. I'm going to delete the make 2D because I've already done this. Delete. I'm going to create a clipping plane. So one, two. There's my clipping plane, and it's currently affecting the current viewport, but I want it to affect the other viewport as well. So I go to properties, and um, I go to arrangement view as well. So sorry, this is the arrangement view. And this is the perspective. This is the view which I'm going to end up having um, scaled and make 2D. So I'm going to rotate this around for now to 90 degrees, so it's vertical. And I'm going to move it into place. That's good enough. Delete this for now. So that you can see, it's cutting into the solids. Now I want to have my camera, I don't know, something like this, but proper, proper, like absolutely square so that it's square to the clipping plane. So I can, the first thing I'm going to do, this is a nice little command, but firstly I have to do a surface. So a three point surface, the same as the clipping plane. One, and there's the surface, I'm going to move that across, there's the surface. Now the 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 com the command is called orient camera to surf, and now it asks me to pick a point on the surface. So I click that, and now I'm perfectly square with this surface, which is perfectly square with the clipping plane. That's the whole point. We want the camera to be perfectly square with the clipping plane. Now if I do uh, the command camera and go uh, show, go back to the arrangement view. You can see that this um, black line is a representation of the perspective sections camera. So the the, the field of view, field of vision is represented. The field of vision and the focal plane is represented by this. So, and you can see how this black line is totally 100% the same depth as this plane and the and subsequently the clipping plane. So that's good. I want to go back to the perspective thing and move my camera into position, which is better. So if I hold down the shift key and right click, I can move it to a position that I'm happy with. I'm also going to change the focal length. No, 28 is good. So I'm going to, with a scroll of the, the middle, middle scroll, I'm going to come towards or scroll up and I'll get to about this point. Maybe you go back one. That's good. And from here, I'm going to do a save view. So save as perspective section. I've already named it, so I'm going to do save, uh, overwrite yes. And you can see that if I go back to the arrangement view, most importantly, this black line has not moved in line with the clipping plane. It's still the same, which is 100% important. The next thing I'm going to do is to create the section because the section needs to be overlaid on, to, on top of the, the Make 2D. So I will go across here, and oh, we've got a layers. And go back here, turn camera off so it's not in the way. Go to camera and then hide. Go back to arrangement view. Now I can select these objects. And do the section command. I'm going to turn off uh, group. So where is this group? Group objects? No, I don't want that. So I'm going to, now it's asking for where I want to do the, the section. So I do the start of the clipping plane because it needs to be in line with the clipping plane. Press tab, go across all the way to here. Now press click again, and press enter. And now you'll see that we have these curves, which are completely closed, which is ideal. And then I'm going to bring those out so they're not in the way of the Make 2D. Go back to the perspective section, 
select them, make 2D, have it like this. So we want to do the view, which is perspective section, object properties maintained by source layers is just what I like to do. You don't have to do it. You can put them all on one layer, but I don't suggest to do that. Um, because when you have much more complicated projects, you might want to do things differently for each layer. And that's why it's maintained source layers is best. Register with previous, uh, that's fine, press OK. And you can see all of the layers are being made. And you can see that the make 2 d has been made. So now I just want to align this on top of this so that I have the clip, the section over the make 2 d That's the whole goal. And do the move command from, let's say, this corner, bottom left corner. To that. Now you can see they're all on top. And note that the Make 2D is exactly the same scale, or the, the clipping plane intersections of the Make 2D are perfectly to scale with the, the section. So we know it's correct. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a quick example of what happens if it's not. So if I go back to the perspective section and I'm going to I'm going to dolly out, so control and then right click. And I believe that, oh, let's turn the camera on. Show, management view, no, it's not working. So take that point, move it out. There we go, that's fine. And back to the perspective section, let's do this again. Make 2D, right click, make 2D. Press OK. And now if I go to the top view, you can see the Make 2D is smaller. So that's proving that the, now I'm going to do name view because so I've already saved it. So double click and you can see, turn the camera on, show arrangement view, you can see it's back to normal. So the critical point is to make sure that that black line is in line with the clipping plane. Now from the top view, top view, let's go to the top view, it's parallel, we're ready to export to scale. So that the, the section cut is to scale. So we go export, and I'm gonna do 02 this time. Save, one to 100 is good. Press okay. Oops. And double click this. Here we go. That's our drawing for now. Let's make everything black. Sections which are represented by the non make 2D layers. So let's drag this. And let's put that, that, and that into this and call this section that goes at the top because it's the closest thing and we want it bed solid so I'm going to switch that to whoops select and switch so now we can see that it's all black I'm going to make a layer called m2h for make 2d hidden so I'll take the hidden hidden, hidden, anything else, put that in there. One more layer for make 2D visible. M2V, put them in the visible, section goes atop, then make 2D visible and make 2D hidden. So now I can select all of the hidden lines, turn dashed off, don't want that. And I'm working in millimeters, so because uh, you, it's, it coincides with Rhino, so 0 0.02 millimeters. And I'm going to make the visible 0, actually, I think that's good. Oh, no, that's a bit too, too much. 0 0.8, no, 0 0.0. 8 millimeters. Oh, whoops. Select. 
What's going on? Oh, sorry. 3.08. There we go. And actually, let's make it a bit more. 3.14. That's better. There we go. Pretty much done now. Um, you can see that they're hidden. You can turn that off. We just have these objects with their um, visible lines, or you can turn it on to give you that bit of that 3D effect. And sort of, even though it's not realistic, it looks pretty decent. So that's the exact same principle as to what was done here. Except here I turned the, the hidden lines off like this. So I hope you got something out of that, and um, maybe this will be a workflow that helps you get that emotional effect to scale through the Make2D and the section overlaid. Cheers.